Here we will draw a cross section of the ascending sensory pathways of the spinal cord, starting first with the posterior column pathway, which carries large sensory fibers. Begin with a spinal cord cross section that includes the gray matter horns, central canal, and posterior median septum. Introduce the posterior intermediate septum, which divides the posterior funiculus into medial and lateral segments. Label the medial segment as the gracile fasciculus and the lateral segment as the cuneate fasciculus. Write thoracic level 6 over the posterior intermediate septum to indicate that the gracile fasciculus carries large fiber sensory information from the lower body, T6 and below, and the cuneate fasciculus carries sensory information from the upper body, T7 and above. A mnemonic for the gracile fasciculus is that ballerinas must have good sensory input from their feet to twirl gracefully. Sensory information from the face travels via the trigeminal sensory system. The gracile and cuneate fasciculi are jointly referred to as the posterior column pathways because of their location in the posterior column of the spinal cord. They comprise large diameter heavily myelinated white matter axon bundles which carry vibration, two-point discrimination, and joint position sensory information. The information ascends quickly along them because of saltatory conduction. In terms of clinical syndromes that involve the posterior columns, neurosyphilis can cause transverse myelitis, which is involvement of an entire cross-section of the spinal cord, brown saccard syndrome, which is involvement of one half of the spinal cord, or tabes dorsalis, which is involvement of the posterior columns and dorsal root ganglii only. In vitamin B12 deficiency, the posterior columns are affected along with the lateral columns, which gives it the name subacute combined degeneration. Now label the long, narrow, anterolateral system in the anterior funiculus. The anterior lateral system comprises small diameter sensory pathways. They carry non-discriminative touch, pain, and thermal sensory information. These fibers have either very thin amounts of myelin or no myelin at all, so action potentials ascend these axons slowly. These small fiber nerves originate within both encapsulated and free nerve endings in the periphery. Anterior spinal artery ischemia affects the anterior lateral system fibers but not the posterior column fibers because it affects only the anterior two-thirds of the cord. Now label the somatotopic organization of the anterior lateral system. The arms are medial and the legs are lateral, which is the same as the somatotopic organization as the descending corticospinal tracts. It is important to label the ventral commissure between the anterior horns. This is the white matter pathway through which the anterior lateral system fibers cross sides of the spinal cord. Finally, label the posterior and anterior spinal cerebellar tracts along the lateral wall of the spinal cord, posteriorly and anteriorly respectively. These tracts carry large sensory fibers to the cerebellum. In Friedreich's ataxia, a lateral column disorder, the posterior spinocerebellar tracts are profoundly affected. This concludes our drawing of the ascending tracts of the spinal cord.